May God bless you. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 say, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. The Word of God is so important. If you listen to the Word, keep it in your heart, put faith in it, and obey and practice the commandments of the Lord, the Lord promises long life and prosperity. I believe you are that person. Listen to the teaching carefully and receive the Word of God into your heart by faith. God bless you. Please listen to the teaching of the Word of God in our YouTube channel, New Hope English, or Instagram, New Hick, N-E-W-H-I-C, TikTok, New Hope International. Okay, this teaching is in the series called Receiving God's Best. There are so many, many lessons to go. I think this one might be number 14 of the English one. Number 14. We want to learn, or maybe number 11, I'm not sure. So, we want to learn the principle of how to receive God's best. When you look at the Bible, you read the Bible, you notice that God, when He created Adam and Eve, right away He said, I bless you. Fill the earth. I bless you. God wants to give us the best. He is a good God. He is a God of goodness. And later on, when Abraham gave his life to God and followed God 100%, God blessed Abraham so much in every way, in every aspect of his life. Health, finances, everything. And God has never changed. He still wants to give us the best. Today, I would like to give you another key to unlock heaven and receive the best from God. The title of this sermon is Your Words and Your Destiny. We're not talking about only today. We're talking about in the future. What can happen to us in the future? One month from now, three years from now, 10 years from now, some of you maybe 50 years from now, what can happen to us? What is our destiny? In order to have the right destiny, we need to make sure that we speak the right thing from our mouth. Our words has everything to do with our destiny, our outcome in the future. I'm going to read many scriptures to show you how important our speech is how important, what kind of words we select to speak. Because our words will definitely determine our future. Psalm 39 verse 1 from Amplified Bible. I said, I will take heed and guard my ways, that I may sin not with my tongue. King David said, I don't want to sin against God with my tongue. I will muscle my mouth as with a brittle while the wicked are before me. King David said, I will watch my mouth. I will put the brittle on my tongue. In other words, he tried to control what he say. He doesn't want to sin against God by his word. In the message translation, the Bible says this way, I am determined, I like that, I am determined to watch steps and tongue so they will not land me in trouble. I decided to hold my tongue as long as wicked is in the room. So sometimes people offend you or do something bad to you. You have a tendency to curse or to say something negative. He said, I'm gonna watch my tongue when the bad people around me try to hurt me. And this is what he say, mums the word. Wow, that's my name, my nickname. <laughs> I say it and kept quiet. But the longer I kept silence. Your determination should be like King David's determination. That from your mouth, you will only speak the word of God or the truth of God, or the will of God. You don't want to lie. You don't want to gossip. You don't want to say bad words, cussing words, cursing words. You don't want to use your mouth to curse yourself or to ruin yourself. 
because what you say will dictate your future. I'm going to read many scriptures to show you. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 7. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. We don't want to speak wicked words. We want to speak the truth. Where is the truth? The truth is in the Bible. In other words, we speak the word of God. Our word will go along or stay in line with the word of God. The word of God say, by his stripe, I'm healed. The word of God say, when we love God, the blessing will go down to thousand generations. The word of God say, God shall bless the righteous, the generous people. God has so many promises in the Bible. God's word is the truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So we speak the truth by speaking the word of God. After the sermon today, after you listen to this sermon, please develop a habit of speaking only the word, only the truth of God. Don't speak lies. Don't speak something bad toward yourself or toward other people. Watch your mouth carefully what you say. Because what you say will determine your future, your destiny. Really? Yeah. What you say? When I talk about my kids, I always say they're going to be successful. They're going to be godly. They're going to serve God. They will do well. I never curse my children because I know my mouth, my words determine the future of my children as well. Now, here are some verses that show Im the importance of your, our tongue, our mouth. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6. The words of the wicked are, lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The mouth of the upright will deliver them from calamity, from sickness, from poverty, from death, from problems, from the storm of life, from hardship. You need to speak righteously. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. You reap what you sow. When you speak positively the word of God, you will reap and satisfy with good things in your life. Make sure you speak only the promises of God and the good things from your mouth. And you shall satisfy the good things from the Lord because of your mouth. Be careful with your mouth. When you talk about your children, your spouse, you talk about your job, you talk about your health, your physical body, you talk about your future, always speak according to the word of God. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. I just want to show you that this is not just my thinking. This is in the Bible. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opened wide his lips shall have destruction. Don't say, I'm poor. Don't say, I will not make it. Don't say, I'm going to die. Don't say, I will fail. No. Success belongs to me. I'm good. I'm rich. I'm prosperous. I'm successful. I'm going to be the blessing to the nations. I'm healed. Even though you have the symptom, Every day you say, I'm healed. Healing belongs to me. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snare of his soul. Wow. Again and again, the Bible says our words have everything to do with our life, with our destination, our future. It really has a big impact on our life. So from now on, if you want to receive God's best, watch your mouth, what you say. Don't go by what you see. You go by what the Word of God say. Now, I want to share with you something quickly here that is important, okay? Sometimes people come to church on Sunday and they really show faithfulness to God by giving tie to God. They could put tithe in. If you don't give tithe, you cheat God, you rob God. Okay, not fun. I don't want to rob God. So you give tithe to the Lord. 
And when you walk out from the sanctuary, go to your car. Oh, economy so bad. Ah, oh, I don't think I'm gonna get out of this debt. Oh, the bill is so high. Oh, financially I'm in trouble. You curse your finances after you give tithe to God. I want to call this thing we call mingled seed or mixed seed. Many weeks ago, I talked about the principle of sowing, sowing the seed, and reaping the harvest. When you sow the seed, you can sow words, you can sow action, you can sow your behavior, your emotion, everything in your life when you produce out, you sow. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. You shall keep my statutes. You need to keep the commandments of the Lord, obey him. Don't be rebellious, don't be stubborn. You shall not let your livestock breed with another kind. You shall not sow your field. So, everyone say so. With mixed seed. Nor shall a garment of mixed linen and wood come upon you. You cannot ask God to bless you while you're giving the offering to God. Or you cannot come to church on Sunday and say, by the stripe of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. But when you go home, I'm sick. I will not get better. Or you say, oh, I will not make it in my life. In other words, you have a mixed seed in your life. On Sunday, you speak the word. On Monday, you curse yourself. The seeds are mixed. In the same way, action too. Okay, this is very important. Listen carefully. If I keep speaking, God bless me. But I keep sowing the action of gossiping, cheating, corruption, and doing bad things all the time. I have mixed seed. My mouth says, God bless me, but my action, I bring curse to myself. Don't have mixed seed, be a real Christian. You do what the Bible say in action. You sow the seed of the right thing. Maybe like me, a pastor come up on the microphone on Sunday and, oh, God is so good. Oh, God is going to bless you behind the scene. I walk out of here, I sin against God. I sow mixed seed. You have to be careful. Your action, your words, everything must go along with the word of God. Everything you do. Don't have mixed seed in your life. I like what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. He said this way, Washing the word of God, washing with water through the word. When you sow the seed, you need to water the seed. And how do you water the seed? Speak the word on it. Because the word is like water that you water that seed after you give tithe and offering. After you serve somebody, you go and help people, you serve. And you say, oh, because I serve, I'm blessed. Because I give, I'm blessed. You need to speak the word of God as the water to really nurture the seed that you sow in your action. It has to go together. Don't speak negative. Don't take me wrong. We are not trying to pretend. Pretending is not faith. We know the economy. We know we have bills to pay. We realize that we may have financial problem. We may have marriage problem. Or our kids have problem. We are not pretending that there's, there are no problem. Okay, listen carefully. We know that there are problems. But faith, faith is not pretending, but faith is fighting. Is it clear? You see the problem, you see the battle, the war, the warfare, everything. But you use your faith to fight against the problem by speaking, speaking by faith, the word of God against the problem in your life. You are not trying to pretend. You know there are problems, but you speak the word. You wash the problem, you sow the seed, and then you water it by the word of God. 
And in this way, your situation will be changed. Remember this: your situation cannot change the word of God, but you can change the word. That you can change the situation by speaking the word that go along with the Bible. Let me repeat one more time: your situation cannot change the Bible. But you can change your situation by speaking what go along with the Bible. You can use your word to change your situation and your future and your destiny. Therefore, make sure you water your action and your seed by the word of God. Keep speaking the word of God. I share with you that this happened to me. I shared this many times. Maybe 10 years ago, I went to Japan to Ibaraki, and I got attacked by the enemy. I came back home with severe whole body eczema to the point that I wanted to retire from being being a surgeon because my hand was so hurting. And since that day on, I have to take prednisone, big dose, 40 milligram, 30 milligram. My face puff up because I was taking prednisone. Prednisone is a steroid that causes you to gain weight and your face look red. But every morning, every afternoon, every evening, I say, by the stripe of Jesus, I'm here already. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm, I just speak every day, even though I haven't seen the healing yet. I keep speaking. And suddenly one day I woke up all gone. And my skin looked like a baby. God healed me overnight. Because I used my mouth to speak the word of God. Why? Because God has the law of faith. In order to move the hand of God, to perform miracle for you, to open the right door for you, to bring the right people to you, to help you financially, you need to understand the law of faith. Let me read from Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I tell you the truth. This is one of the reasons I work so hard to produce shorts and reels in the Instagram and also TikTok and shorts in the uh, YouTube because I want to grab people to hear the word. As much as we can. Yesterday, one sister talked to me. Wow, I like your Instagram. She's an American sister who usually sit here. And she said, wow, come up every day. Pop, 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 pop. You know why? Because, listen carefully. You speak what is in your heart. And if you keep feeding your heart with the junk of the social media, all the politics, all the bad stuff, attacking, all kind of bad stuff, you're going to speak those things from your mouth all the time. And I see it with my own eyes. I saw some, I know some Christian brother who just keeps speaking negative. And when I research, oh, he listened to bad news all the time in the internet. But if you feed your heart, fill your heart with the word, what happened? You're going to speak the word. Because what come out from your mouth? Come from your heart. Therefore, I never waste my time with bad news in the social media. All kind of bad stuff in the TikTok. I just go with the word. Feed myself with the word so I can speak the word of God. It's very important. The more of the word you put into your heart, the more it's going to come out from your mouth. So when the word of God come in, you mix it with faith and you speak out with faith. Come in, speak. Come in, speak. When you get the word of God in, you have faith, then you have expectation. After you have expectation, you start to speak it out. And after you speak it out, you're going to see the result by speaking. Speaking the word of God out of your mouth is so important. Let me read from Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For as surely I say to you, whoever says, everyone say, says, is a speak to this mountain, maybe to your debt, to your sickness, to the kid's problem, to financial situation, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, 
but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. You feed your heart with the word, mixed with faith. Yes, yes, I agree, I believe. And don't stop there. Don't just keep in your heart and have faith. No, 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 no. Mouth, speak. Heart, receive, mix with faith, and speak it out. Every time I look at my wife, I say, Da, you're so beautiful. Da, you're going to live a long life. She's going to live a long life because I cannot live without her. She needs to be with me. So I plan to live 120 years. She's going to live 130 years. Longer than me. <laughs> so I speak it. So husband, speak to your wife. You're so beautiful. You speak. You're healthy. You're strong. You're blessed. You speak it out. Amen? Amen. So when you feel sick inside your body, I'm healed. By the stripe of Jesus, I'm healed. You speak like that. When you get into financial situation, you say, I'm blessed financially. God bless me. Amen? Amen. Jesus became poor so that I might be rich. You speak it. That is what Jesus did for us. You have the word of God in you and you speak it out by faith. This is we call the law of faith. The law of faith is not just only believe in your heart, but you need to speak it out by faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, again, mouth and heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Look at verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is the law of faith. Believe in the heart. Believe in the word. Believe who God is. There is God. He died for you. Jesus went to the cross to pay for your sin. Jesus went to the cross and he took your sin away. He took your death and he gave you life super abundant life, eternal life. At the cross, he took your poverty and he gave you riches. At the cross, he took your shame and he gave you honor. At the cross, he took your curses and he gave you the blessing. He took your sickness and gave you healing and divine health. Do you believe that? You look so excited. You believe that? Salvation is not just only go to heaven. Salvation covers every aspect of life. Salvation, zozo. You shall be saved. But you believe first what Jesus did for you and speak it out. Don't keep your mouth shut. Speak it out. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I know that this is kind of anti-Asian culture. Asian culture tend to keep our mouth shut and don't speak much. When we feel excited, we just, oh, really, really, really. <laughs> no, you need to, hey, yes, I'm healed. You need to speak it out. I'm blessed. <laughs> I came from that culture, everyone quiet. My dad just sit there quiet. Never say, I bless you. Oh, ch- son, I bless you. Never say even one word from the mouth of my dad because it's a culture. Just keep your mouth shut. No, Christian, we speak it out. Son, you are blessed. Daughter, you are blessed. You're going to marry a godly person. You speak it out. Amen? (laughs) Okay, let me help you. Can you imagine this law of faith that Jesus did for you on the cross. You believe what he did. He was raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth can change your destiny from hell to heaven. Again, from hell, out of hell to heaven. You think it will be easier for him to heal you? To bless you financially? 
to help you in other things? If he can save you from hell, other things are the piece of cake. He can do too. Is it clear? So this principle is not applied only for you to get out of hell, but for you to get out of debt, out of sickness, out of family problem, family issues, out of divorce and all kinds of sin in your life and darkness and bondage. He wants to get you out from those things because you're the heir of his promise. He's going to help you. Speak the word of God from your mouth. Now, let me show you another scripture to see how important your destiny, your future going to be by your mouth. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are there not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Those who inherit salvation are born again Christians, are heirs of salvation. We are born again Christians. We inherit salvation. But this scripture, Hebrew 1.14, talk about angels. Angels. God said that God sent angels out to help us. God sent angel us to angel out to minister to us and help us. I never forget. Um, short tree story. One day I was walking on the ice, very icy place, and I slipped. And my body fly in the air at almost 70 years old. Landed on the ground. By medical knowledge, I can have broken back or broken hip or something. But I feel like somebody put a hand on my back and put me down gently. And I did not have even one scratch or one pain. The angel. Another time, I was driving down the hill with the snow on the ground from Harborview Hospital in downtown. And I just came to America. I did not know how to drive in the snow because I grew up in the uh, hot country. So I put the foot on the brake so strong. Ha, ha, ha. What happened? Bad. The car slid on the ice. And I say, Jesus, help me. I chow like this. You know what happened? The car stopped on the downhill road with the eyes, just stop. And I know right away, the angel stopped my car. My daughter and my son-in-law was driving on the icy freeway and all the car like slide like this and gonna hit each other. And my son-in-law and my daughter and the kids cried out, Jesus help us. The whole time, the car slid, slid like this, but never hit any car. Sound like somebody moved the car, moved back and forth to avoid all the accident. The angels helped them. The angels are real. Okay, now let me read this scripture to show you how angels are going to come to help you. How angels get into the motion, move him, themselves to help you. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels. This scripture talks about angels. Who excel in strength. Excel in strength. Who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word. What does it mean here? It means this way. The angels of God, the good angel, not the bad angel, will only move according to the word of God. If God say turn right, they turn right. If God say turn left, they turn left. They will not do anything themselves. They just follow the command and the word of God. Okay, how the angel can hear the word of God? Number one, when God himself speak to them. Or two, when Jesus speak. And three, when you speak. Is it clear? So when you speak the word, no, you, you don't speak the worldly thing. You don't speak the non-biblical thing. You don't speak the, your own idea. You speak the word. When the angel hear your word, the word, they move. And they come to do something for you. 
And not only that, they excel in their strength. They move and they come and help you. They speak to your boss to give you promotion. Or they move in the heart of your customer to come to you. And you get the deal. He, they move for you. So this is why it's so important to speak the word. Because it's the law of faith, number one. Two, you move the angel to help you. When you speak the word of God from your mouth, God going to send the angel. Okay, go. Do it. Do it. Do it for them. Do you want angel to be on your side? Yes. You want the angel to work for you? Yes. What should you do? Speak the word of God. When you speak the word of God, don't speak doubt, don't speak unbelief, don't speak negative things. The angel shall move on your behalf. Amen. And they will, they will not only that, they will bring the word of God to pass. It shall happen. Because you speak the word of God. Amen. Who make that choice? What word you say? You and me. What choices we make in our language, in our speech, will determine our outcome. So, before I end this sermon, I'm going to end now. Number one, I want to ask this question. Do you want to receive God's best? Yes. You, do you believe God wants to give you His best? Yes. Number two, do you believe the Word of God? Do you take the word of God in every day? Reading the Bible, listen to good teaching every day. Do you believe? Okay. Three, will you speak it? Yes. No matter what happens, you speak the word of God. Yes. Will you watch your mouth? Yes. Will you be careful of what you say? Yes. Do you believe that what you say determines your outcome and your future yes. and your destiny? You believe that? Yes. So from now on, bless your children. They'll be successful. They're blessed because Jesus blessed them. You speak like that. You, you speak according to the word of God. Get rid of all the words that are not in line with the word of God. Don't speak those things. Speak only what the word of God say. So, in practical way, one, I'm going to conclude now. Keep filling your heart with the word of God every day. Because what comes out from your mouth, it comes from your heart. So first step, fill your heart. Read the Bible every day. Go to the Bible study. Listen to the good biblical teachings. I notice that people who follow our ministry all over the world, including in America and Europe and Asia, those who listen to our teaching a lot, they are blessed amazingly because they fill their heart with the word. They don't waste time listening to bad stuff in the internet. They just listen to the word, fill their heart with the word of God, go to the Bible class, study the Bible, read the Bible, listening to good biblical teaching. Always get into the word of God. Fill your heart with the word of God. And number two, start changing the way you speak. If you make mistake, you say something wrong, don't condemn yourself. Just repent and say, okay, next time I will not do it again. We cannot develop this habit overnight. It takes some time to develop the habit of speaking the word all the time. It takes time. Don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn each other. And if you keep developing this habit, eventually the word of God will come out from your mouth without even thinking. It just becomes your natural, second nature. When people speak to you, oh, you know, I'm sick, I have a problem, you say, you're going to be healed by the stripe of Jesus. You should speak. Amen? You face problem? Oh, I'm more the conquerors. Jesus is going to fight this battle for me. I'm victorious one. Amen. Amen. Amen? When you face family problem, you say, oh, because I love God, I seek the kingdom of God first. God's going to bless my family. Amen. I'm going to have victory over this problem. Amen. You speak it. Yeah. You may not see the result overnight. That's okay. Keep speaking it. 
Don't speak negative. And number three, find scriptures regarding your situation. Find the scriptures regarding your situation. You can see here, I want to preach about your mouth, your speech. So many scriptures I read today. It's amazing, this Bible, each topic, so many scriptures in each topic. Healing topic, finances topic, family topic, every topic, so many scriptures in here that you can discover and you put in your heart, mix with faith and speak it. And you're going to see your life turn around. Just keep moving toward the victory. Again, your words have everything to do with your outcome, your future, and your destiny. Don't blame God. You have responsibility on your own to study the Bible, to mix the Word of God with faith, and to speak, keep speaking the Word of God. And the angel going to move for you. They're going to excel that strength and help you to fulfill what God say in the Bible. And the law of faith is going to work in you. Miracles will come. God's going to move his hand because you use the law of faith in your life. From now on, you're going to be careful with what you say. How many people are going to practice what you learn here? Amen? You take serious about the word? You're going to mix the word with faith? Definitely, the person who helped you to mix the word with faith is the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it by, on your own. You need the Holy Spirit to help you to mix the word of God with faith. And from now on, who's going to say only what the Bible say? Amen. You will do that? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Wow, I'm going to hear many testimonies in this church. Yes. Wow. wow. That day, miracle happened. Wow, I have victory. Oh, we're going to have a lot of testimony here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Any negative thing happen, don't panic. You fight with faith. You don't pretend that it's not happening. You know the truth that something bad happened, but you fight with faith. You speak it. Amen? Let us pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for teaching this important principle how we use our words, what we say from our mouth. Lord, help us to develop the habit of filling our heart with your word, with your truth. The truth shall set us free. We want to practice the law of faith, that is to receive the word mixed with faith and speak it out from our mouth every day. We believe and declare when we speak the word of God, the angels shall be sent to us. They will move their hand. They will help us to get the victory in our life, Lord. There are ministering spirits who will help us. Lord, if we make a mistake of speaking negative, unbiblical words, Lord, remind us, we know you don't condemn us. We are human beings. Sometimes we walk by sight, not by faith. Sometimes we don't know the word enough. But train us until we have the lifestyle of speaking only what the word of God say. In agreement or in line with the word of God. Lord, I believe and declare my brother and sister who listen to this teaching shall experience miracles after miracles. Breakthroughs after breakthroughs. Victory after victory. Lord, miracles, signs and wonders, and the heaven will support them. Lord, they will see victory in their life, Lord, and they shall receive God's best. And one day, when they get old, like Abraham, they will be able to say like Abraham, oh, my life, God bless me in every way. All the good things come to my life because they exercise what they learn in this teaching, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
I just want to make sure you are a child of the living God. In order to be a child of the living God, number one, you need to believe that God is real. God created you. This is not just an idea of religion. God is so real. He created you. He loved you so much. He proved that He is God when Jesus died on the cross and He was raised from the dead on the third day. And He performed so many miracles. He loved you. Number two, you admit that you make mistakes. You have sinned against God. And you ask God for forgiveness by repenting of your sin and asking Him to forgive you. Three, you believe that Jesus paid a price for you. He paid a price of your sin for you. So you accept that forgiveness and the salvation. When you do that, you are born again. And you begin to experience the goodness of God. You become a child of the living God. He will take care of you. He will protect you, provide for you when you obey Him. I want to encourage believers in this room, please walk in obedience to God. You know why? God loved you so much. What He's saying here is for your sake. He gave the word for your benefit. Your job is to surrender and obey the word. Don't be stubborn. Don't be rebellious. Don't give excuses. Just walk by faith. Do it. Do it. Obey the word. Don't argue. Don't give all the excuses. Oh, God has grace for me. I can sin. That's okay. No, just obey the word. And you shall see the blessing and the victory. Amen? Amen. Why you obey the word? Because you love him. And you fear him. I pray all the time for my church members that you are you all going to love God more and more each day. It's so important to love God. And love not just only sing from your mouth. I loved you. You love God in action. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey my commandment. Amen. I learned one thing about life. I cannot trust people's mouth anymore. I need to see people's action. People can say anything, but it doesn't count. Whatever they say, until their action go along with their word. We need to see people's action. Amen. I'm talking about when people say this and that. I don't believe it until I see the action. So let us confess together. Follow my prayer. Father in heaven, you are the living God. You created me. You love me so much. You have the best plan for my life. You have a good purpose for me. I repent of my sin. I hate sin, and I loved you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me, paying the price of sin for me. Lord Jesus, you were raised from the dead on the third day. Please come into my life. Be my God, my Savior. From today on, I will obey you. I will grow in love, love you more each day. I grow in faith. I have more faith in who you are, in your word. And I will speak the word by faith. And I will see victory in my life. God's best will come to me. Because I speak the word by faith. And I don't want to use mixed seed. My action, my words, my emotion, my mentality will be right. Not mix the bad and the good. I'm going to only use the truth to guide me, my action, my words, my feeling, my emotion, in Jesus' name. 
เอเมน Thank you Jesus Hallelujah So from now on don't use mixed seed okay Only pure seed of the word of God Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. The book of Psalm 119 verse 11 say, "I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you." I believe you have hidden the word of God in your heart, and you shall practice what you learn. I would like to greet you from Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles, and I believe that God will open heaven over you, pour out His grace, His mercy, His anointing. And power on you. You shall experience His goodness, and you will be the blessing to the nations. Please listen to other teachings in this series as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken. You are free from the bondage, and you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you, and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness. His favor, and you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer, and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat, and you shall have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you. In this generation, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jehovah Hamachi.